My name is Adam Hinks. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. I'm in the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics and also at St. Michael's College, where I teach in the Christianity and Culture program. And I'm also a Roman Catholic priest. I belong to the Society of Jesus, more commonly known as the Jesuits. Yeah, there are definitely astronomers who believe in God. Uh, astronomers are people just like everyone else and just like uh, the general population. There are some astronomers who believe in God, there are some astronomers who don't believe in God, and there are some astronomers who, who aren't sure, who are agnostic. So, so it's a pretty simple uh, answer, I think, to the question. Yeah, there are astronomers who believe in God. Uh, as a Jesuit, I belong to a group that's produced uh, lots of astronomers uh, throughout our nearly 500 year history. One interesting factoid is that there are 35 craters on the moon that are named after Jesuit scientists. The majority of them uh, being astronomers in particular. So, so people like Christopher Clavius from the 16th century, who was one of the, the people who gave us the modern day calendar that we use today throughout the world, or people like Maximilian Hull, who, who observed a transit of Venus in the 18th century uh, and, and, and measured the distance from the Earth to the Sun fairly accurately. Um, or people like, like Boscovich, uh, who, who made important advances in, um, in the study of, of planetary orbits. Um, or people like Angelo Secchi, he was a, an Italian Jesuit astronomer in the 19th century who's often called the father of astrophysics because he was the first to classify stars based on, based on their spectrum. Uh, so he was one of the first people to ask the question, you know, not where are stars, which is what astronomers typically did, um, but what are stars made out of? Because that's what you learn by studying their spectrum. Um, another really famous example is Georges Lemaitre. He's sometimes called the father of the Big Bang because he was the, the first person to propose uh, what, what we now call the Big Bang Theory. He was a, a Belgian priest um, who was one of the leading cosmologists of his day. He was one of the first people to, to study Einstein's theory of gravity for cosmology and made really important contributions to cosmology. Um, one other person I could mention here in Canada, I've never met her, but another person who's also like me, uh, a religious, is, is a nun. Uh, her name is Libby Osgood, and she's a professor uh, in Prince Edward Island. So she'd be another example of someone like me who's taken particular vows um, and who's doing astronomy. Well, to start with, I would say Christianity isn't something you first and foremost study, but something that you uh, that you live. Uh, and I've always I've always been a person of faith, and my my Christian faith has always been fundamental to to who I am. Uh, and I was studying I studied physics as an undergraduate. I went to I went to graduate school, was doing a PhD in in physics, specializing in cosmology, the study of the universe as a whole. Uh, and it was when I was a graduate student that I felt this, this desire or this call to, to live my Christian faith in a particular way. Um, and I became interested in, in the Society of Jesus, in the Jesuits. Um, the Jesuits, it's a, what we call an order, um, a group of uh, Catholic brothers and priests in the Catholic Church. There are about 16,000 of us around the world. Um, and when I was a graduate student, I started discerning uh, whether I wanted to follow this particular path. Uh, and by the time I finished my PhD, I was pretty sure this is something I wanted to try. Uh, after a lot of prayer, after a lot of speaking to, to Jesuits, getting advice, going on, going on retreats, uh, visiting communities, I applied uh, to the Jesuits and I, I entered the order in 2009. Um, and that's when I began um, uh, kind of, you might say, non-physics studies because we have a fairly long training. If you want to be a Catholic priest, there are, there are a lot of studies that you need to do. So I studied philosophy for two years uh, here, here in Toronto at Regis College, which is the Jesuit college um, at the Toronto School of Theology. Um, and then I also spent five years studying theology. Uh, one definition, one classical definition of theology is that theology is faith 
seeking understanding. So theology is the academic study of, of faith. Um, and so you, you do courses, uh, there are many different areas within theology. And I did uh, a three-year degree in theology in Rome at the Pontifical Gregorian University. And then I did a two-year master's degree back here in Toronto, uh, again at Regis College at the Toronto School of uh, Theology. Um, and so I've, so I've done kind of um, lots of years of academic studies, both in, in physics and astronomy, as well as in philosophy and theology. Um, so academically, I also have um, uh, an interest in interdisciplinary questions. What, what is the conversation between um, questions of creation that come from a theological point of view, and how does that relate to kind of the big questions that we're asking in cosmology? I think a good place to start is by recognizing that different disciplines have their own competence, have their own sphere of authority, and it's important to maintain those distinctions. So, you know, theology isn't cosmology, and co cosmology isn't theology, and neither is philosophy. Um, so it's important to, to kind of understand, first of all, what are the questions that are appropriate to each discipline so that you don't get confused. So it's where things start getting interesting is asking the question about, well, well can there be a conversation about, about these different disciplines? Can the results of uh, cosmology, physical cosmology for instance, influence the way that we, that we do theology? Um, and I would say certainly what we've learned about the, the history of the universe, what we've learned about it scientifically, has been extremely enriching to the way that we approach questions of creation from, uh, from cosmology. One concrete example of where there can be a conversation between uh, the science and the philosophy and, and the theology is a question about the beginning of the universe. So a lot of people uh, think that you know, if the universe has a beginning, that means that it needs to have a cause and therefore it needs to have a creator. Um, you know, that's a good starting point, but when you, when you start looking at, at that question of the beginning of the universe from, from these dis different disciplines, you realize that, that the question is a lot more rich and complex. So first of all, from the scientific point of view, um, there's a lot of debate about whether the Big Bang was in fact the beginning of the universe or whether it was a transition from a previous state of the universe. Um, and then if you look from kind of the religious point of view, there's actually been a lot of debate through history about whether the universe did have a beginning or not. So in the Middle Ages, there was um, a really big debate um, that was interreligious. So there were Muslims, there were Jews, there were Christians involved. Some of them said that you could prove that the universe has to have a beginning. Others thought you could prove that the universe couldn't have had a beginning. Others thought you couldn't prove it either way. And these were all people who believed um, that the universe was created by God. Uh, and so, and so their, their notion of creation wasn't necessarily strictly tied to the idea that the universe had a t equals zero. Their concept of creation was, was a lot richer. So there's a lot today that you can explore about this question about the beginning of, uh, of the universe. Now there is, there is kind of this biblical tradition that affirms that yes, the universe does have, uh, does have a beginning of time, but what exactly did that beginning look like? and how would that relate to our physical understanding of time. That's, a, that's an incredibly uh, rich uh, topic um, that, that I'm very interested in. If you take the broader look at history, the idea that there has to be a conflict between science and religion is a fairly recent phenomenon that you can kind of trace back to the 19th century. Now it's a much more complicated history um, than that, but I don't like conflict as a starting point because um, I look at it more from the point of view as what's the conversation that can happen between um, the religious way of looking at the world and the scientific way of looking at the world. You know, if truth is ultimately coherent, if the world is ultimately coherent, then these two views um, will ultimately not conflict if they're properly understood um, and, if, and if we have properly understood them. Um, I think where the conflict comes is more, you know, within, within people themselves. As people are trying to figure out 
um, what they believe about the world and how they fit into the world um, and they start looking at the world from these dis different points of view or at least considering these different points of views um, I think that's where the conflict can happen as we as human beings try and work through and struggle through um, where we stand in relation to, to these big questions. And so the, I think there, are, there certainly are people who do, who do have a personal struggle between, between their faith and, and what they're learning in, in science. Um, my response to that would be is uh, um, work through that struggle, ask the questions, look for the answers, talk to experts, uh, think about it. If you're a person of faith, pray about it. Um, but don't, don't necessarily walk away from, from the conflict, but, um, but uh, try and engage with it because that's where you'll find the energy. Um, you, don't, you don't find answers by, by asking easy questions. Easy questions have easy answers. Um, you, you make progress uh, in your growth as a person, you make progress in knowledge by asking, by asking difficult questions and then you know, having the courage um, and you know, taking the time to, to, to work through them responsibly um, and putting the energy into them.